We are closing out the first week of fall, and on Wednesday next week, we'll be turning the calendars to October. Somewhere over the southwest Atlantic, the tropics are stirring from a long slumber, and we find yet another major hurricane on the charts once again. Let's take a look. Gabrielle is northeast of the Azores, still a strong post-tropical cyclone, and that will hit Portugal on Sunday. Umberto has undergone significant strengthening this afternoon, up to 115 miles an hour leapfrogging from high-end Category 1 to low-end Category 3. So we now have a major hurricane down to 962 millibars tracking northwest at 4 knots, it is forecast to move west of Bermuda. It will strengthen to Category 4 by tomorrow night, with a potential for Category 5, then undergo gradual weakening. At this time, not forecast to hit the U.S. coast. And we have potential Tropical Cyclone 9, or soon-to-be Tropical Storm Imelda, forecast to track over the Bahamas this weekend and gradually strengthen to a Category 1 hurricane. At this time, it appears it'll take a direct path towards the Carolinas and then stall out offshore as a tropical storm around midweek. We compare that with the deterministic GFS forecast. There's potential tropical storm Imelda. Here is Umberto. And we go forward and look at the GFS forecast and the uh, track on Imelda soon to be Imelda appears to be right on course and the same thing for Umberto but there's been talk about the Fujiwara effect that's where we get an interplay between two circulations in close proximity caused by a, a delicate balance between centripetal pull and the storm zone inertia as they trade angular momentum we could be seeing some of that on this forecast so there's a bit of uncertainty how this is all going to play out. And I would say Bermuda is not really out of the woods. The southeastern U.S., this is probably the time to do your basic precautions, make sure you shop and get any supplies you may need, not just in the Carolinas, but on the Florida coast and elsewhere, the Gulf and the East Coast as well, because this forecast is not quite final just yet. The surface analysis late this afternoon showed a Pacific front moving into the northern plains, the leading edge near Pierre, Ogallala, and Fort Collins, Colorado, the uh, tail end extending through Salt Lake City and central Nevada. We have this weak wedge of continental tropical air, post dry line air, dew points down into the 20s at Colorado Springs and Trinidad, but just to the east, starting to build up a little bit of moisture or dew points in the mid-50s. But even in Texas, it is moisture-starved. To find those 60s, boy, we got to go all the way down to Corpus Christi, the central Gulf Coast, and all the way through Florida and the Carolinas. A reinforcing push of East Canadian air moving into the northeastern U.S. and across Arizona and New Mexico, the monsoon pattern continues. And we are getting about to the end of the season. We start to get the increase in prevailing westerlies across the western U.S., but for the time being, plenty of moisture, dew points in the 50s and 60s throughout the lower deserts. The current monsoon graphics does show a cutoff flow in southern California and deep southerly flow reaching up in Arizona, dew points into the 60s all through this axis from Hermosillo to Phoenix. Over the next several days, we'll see that low start to get picked up and move to the northeast. And we see it replaced by drier air. Dew points start falling off into the 40s. And that's that prevailing westerlies I was talking about, more typical of autumn. The 500 millibar chart this evening is starting to show pretty much a a uh, single polar front jet from the Pacific into southern Canada, and there's that cutoff low out there in the southwest deserts, another cutoff low across the southeastern U.S. Going into the weekend and into next week, we see amplification of the pattern, especially on the west coast. What looks like, uh, let's see, let's count the contours here. Yeah, that's going to be a large, very broad, but weak 
in amplitude, upper level, low across the Carolinas. Uh, this is a little ridge right in here through the Midwest. And these two circulations probably associated with Imelda and Umberto. Anyway, yeah, the Pacific is going to be wide open on the West Coast for next week. So an active weather pattern in Oregon, Washington. And as we go into the, uh, yeah, the end of next week in October, already here, it is still fairly high amplitude. Some interesting features working through the western U.S. Big old ridge across the east, so continuation of warm weather and stormy in the western part of the continent. And they're already getting battered out there in the Pacific. Let's take a quick look out there. Yeah, another strong Pacific system, a compact low 970 millibars, possibly lower just west of Juneau. Strong pressure gradients through southern, uh, the southern Alaska panhandle. And they are under a high wind warning south of Juneau all the way down to Ketchikan until 10 p.m. this evening. South winds will be blowing at 40 miles an hour, gusting to 70 miles an hour, then gradually improving through the night. Wind warnings are in effect from Vancouver Island up to Bella Bella this afternoon. South winds to 60 miles an hour. The interior valleys, they're getting some action as that front comes in. Let me just show that to you. Yeah, here's how it looked at four in the morning. This is the British Columbia sector, so the Alaska Panhandle right in here. And the fronts, we'll draw that on. There's the cold front, warm front, and the occlusion. So all that heads inland during the day. Heavy showers, strong pressure gradients, a uh, 966 possibly millibar low offshore, quite deep there. In fact, I, I think I can pick up 963 right there. And gradually, this whole Bear Clinic mess starts shifting inland. So some areas getting heavy rain, heavy snow, strong winds all through the coastal ranges north of Vancouver. And the current time looking like this. So gradually, some of this stuff is starting to move pretty far inland, but trailing down through Vancouver Island, not quite to Vancouver itself. Also, the other chunk, the occlusion remaining over the Alaska Panhandle. And you compare that with the model of a classic synoptic scale system, we're probably looking at a well-developed system like this. So British Columbia, Alaska, somewhere in here, this would be Juneau. And this is the new area of possible bear clinic development further south in British Columbia. So this is a pretty interesting study of a strong Pacific weather system moving into the British Columbia, Alaska region. And gradually, the pressure fields start flattening out and just kind of a strong onshore component with rain showers, snow showers all up and down the coast. Looks like uh, round two out here coming in for early next week. And we check out the rest of Alaska. It is cool, 20s and 30s with 40s in southeast Alaska. In the Canadian high Arctic, not very much going on in occlusion through uh, Resolute down to Cambridge Bay, further south in Canada, and occlusion moving into Manitoba, bringing in some drier and cooler air. Another wind warning is in effect for central Quebec. They're expecting gusts up to uh, 70 miles an hour out to the Belcher Islands and then down to James Bay and over towards Labrador, this area right here. And since that is underneath this concentric thickness field, that's an indication that we've got a cold core low up there with a potential for showery weather, mixture of snow and rain showers. An SPC slight risk is in effect for both Tucson and Phoenix this afternoon. There's a the potential for an isolated tornado with strong convective winds and a chance of a uh, hailstorm as well. The satellite imagery at the start of the day shows showers on the Mogollon Rim with expansion into the lower deserts, especially around Phoenix this afternoon. Other cells popping up around Tucson and further south of the border, south of Bisbee and Douglas. Other storms going up around Las Vegas as well. So all of the big cities getting a piece of the action. The radar does show some of the heavier convective elements at this time, just east of Chandler, and these are putting out some outflow. You can see that right there, distinctive outflow boundary. 
So, yeah, this is kind of drawing up that outflow boundary into the updraft. So some continued severe weather possibilities on this storm. We go up to the higher tilts and we do find uh, kind of a weak notch right there, almost a beware. It's kind of rare for Arizona. I'm going to put a mark there, drop back down to the surface, and you can see that that is right in that updraft area. We go up to the top of the storm, we would expect to find the stronger tops right above that. And indeed, that's what we do find. So uh, yeah, certainly a very potent cell. If I was chasing, I probably want to be out on this road and get a better look to the west and also have an escape option. I'm not expecting big tornadoes out there, but you did see that 2% chance for this afternoon. So we can't totally rule that out. These are back behind the outflow boundary, so not too much going on with those very likely. Let's check out the, yeah, see Las Vegas, they've got their own severe thunderstorm warning. These elements are drifting to the southwest, and this appears to be the outflow boundary. So it's kicked out pretty far ahead of these storms. So I think the main hazard on this is going to be strong, gusty winds. We can take a look at the vertical pass through that storm, get kind of a 2D or a, yeah, I guess you can say a 3D picture. And we do find the higher cores directly above. Yeah, that looks kind of like an air mass storm. I don't see much of a uh, severe signature on that. But yeah, you definitely want to monitor those advisories because things can change very rapidly. These were the high temperatures we were expecting across the country. Pretty warm in the central U.S. and along the East Coast. Other areas, mild to warm. For tomorrow, pretty similar. A little bit of warm weather there across Texas and Oklahoma. The heat spreads northward into the northern plains for Sunday. A little bit cooler there in the Rockies. And we go into Monday and Tuesday, an expansion of that heat across the Midwest. And those 90s continue down there in Texas for the foreseeable future. Overnight lows looking like this. So pretty cool up there in the northern Rockies. And that cool weather moves into the northern Great Lakes and into the northeastern U.S. for early Monday. For the rest of tonight, we're focusing on two areas of precipitation for the southern Rockies and for the Atlantic seaboard all the way down to the southeast. That will continue through tomorrow. And then we'll see some drying in the eastern U.S. for Sunday, although right around Wilmington, those rain chances will continue. In the western U.S., however, plenty of rain through New Mexico, the Four Corners, and Utah. And then we see this new Pacific system coming inland for Sunday night and Monday. Rain chances near 100% at Seattle, Portland, and Medford. And elevated chances for precip in the southeastern U.S. due to the potential arrival of Imelda. As we go into midweek, continued rainy in the northwestern U.S. However, we see a drying trend across much of the country. So we'll take a look at those weather charts, starting with tonight. You've already seen this. Going into tomorrow, just a gradual progression of that front into the northern plains. One little disturbance working up the east coast and then down in the corner, there comes potential tropical storm or hurricane Imelda. Again, that looks to be approaching the Carolinas coast for Monday. There's where we start seeing some of the first effects there. Also a new weather system coming into the Pacific with that increase in the Pacific storm track. Then we go into the beginning of next week. Looks like Imelda comes inland. At this point, it could really be anywhere. The models are really not very good with post-landfall interactions this far out. So I will not pay too much attention to that. I would say rain chances are going to be elevated across a pretty wide area. On the west coast, here comes our next weather system for Tuesday. Some development in the Great Basin area late in the week. However, most of the impacts will be in the northern and central plains. Possibility of severe weather for Saturday the 4th. And of course, that is an anniversary of the 1998 outbreak in Oklahoma one of the biggest fall outbreaks on record. I don't know how many tornadoes there were, but October 4th, 98, you can look that up on the internet and find out a bit about that. 
Anyway, most of that will be heading into the Midwest, very little down south. I guess we've got a capping inversion, maybe a little bit too much plateau air coming northeastward. And that'll be it for the forecast. And that will be all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Just as a reminder, one way you can help support this program is on weathergraphics.com. That is my own website, and that's where I have all of my forecast books. I used to be a forecaster in the Air Force, and I have distilled all of my techniques into a very readable form, very comprehensive, different topics. And it is very hard to find book titles like that. Most books are conceptual or introductory or theoretical. This is actual practicing forecast information. So those of you who have the books, yeah, please post some comments and let us know how you like it. And hopefully we'll get a few more readers and a few more fans on board. So check that out, weathergraphics.com. All right, we'll see you back here on Tuesday for the next show and on Monday for the supporter show, the private supporter video. All right, hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.